Hey everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Well, we have a little bit of an ice storm going on in Wisconsin, so why not spend our time revealing the inner guts of a three-phase contactor? Those of you who checked out the last video know that I got a few of these for a really low price at the recent Hamfest, and I have heard they are very repairable in the field, but since this one has some clues as to how to do it, I thought we could all take a look. So, looking at contacts, it's always pretty easy to figure out. There are three giant contacts coming in, three giant contacts coming out. But look at some of these other clues. This one says, remove, to remove coil, loosen screws. So let's give that a try. As I, as I was buying these um, contactors, I was wondering, would I be able to clean the contacts that went with them, you know, to in case they're really old and you know have been seen a lot of use so um, could i reveal the contacts was one thing the other question was could the coil be changed to a different voltage now i don't know if i'd ever do that because the coils actually sometimes cost as much as the contactors but uh, let's check out how this works out so i loosened the two screws that say to remove coil loosen screws so um, just give it a gentle tug and this cover comes off and that actually reveals the coil. Now this is a 120 volt coil and um, that will work if you run the white wire along with your three phase. But if you don't, you would need a 220 volt coil. So it says to lift, uh, to remove lift here. So I'm just gonna very gently, this is all Bakelite plastic. So I'm gonna be extremely gentle and see what I can do about that. Um, Giving it a little tug. It's um, it's definitely loose and it definitely wants to come out. So let's see what we can do here. There are two mystery contacts as well that I'm really interested in figuring out what's going on there. So this is just kind of a tight fit. It's not that it's jammed, it's just all the edges are square. So there we have it. That is, I'm gonna move this back so you can get a good look. That is the coil, and it's just literally a coil. Um, contactors, if you don't know, are actually just giant relays. So every relay has a coil that pulls contacts in. These are just designed for super big uh, currents, like big three-phase motors. Now, if I take a look in here, what does the coil move? Well, if I pull back on this a little bit, I can see the coil moving a bit. And if I pull back enough, I suspect it's going to snap into place. Now the other intriguing little message given by these notes is to inspect contacts loosen screws. That's one I'm really interested in. So there are two more screws. Hopefully you can see this pretty well. Let's take a look at those. So I'm removing these screws. Now I would have to expect, given that these things sit in machines for decades, that you might want to clean the contacts at some point. But let's just take a look what's inside. So again, I'm gonna gently lift up on this mechanism. And lo and behold, there it is. Wow, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, but you can see the contacts in there. Let me get this little flashlight. There you go. You can see they're a little, they have a little bit of carbon deposit on them and a little bit of corrosion, if you will. So what I would do is get in there with a little bit of emery cloth, clean that up, and I suspect that would um, eliminate any issue that might be occurring with this. Now there are a lot of other screws on a contactor and I just wanted to highlight a few of those. These on the side are normally open, normally closed switch and they're used to sense when the relay contactor has been tripped and or use them for push on, push off. So when the relay is um, pulled down, when it's energized, these um, contacts close and you can use them for various uh, automation operations within the contactor. Down here at the bottom, many of these have motor overload protection, and that's what this is. It trips and opens a set of contacts that will typically open the relay in the case of a uh, motor overload. So this is pretty cool. That's really all I wanted to do was reveal the inner guts of this, uh, of this contactor for everybody to get a good see. Now, let me put it back together and see if my $20 for many of these was actually worth it. Does the coil energize? Okay, well, all reassembled. It comes apart uh, quite easy for servicing. It goes back together quite easy for putting back into service. 
And if I did have a 220 volt coil or a 208 volt coil, it would swap in here um, quite easily. So where does the coil connect? Well, I did a little tracing. This screw here connects to this screw and that's zero ohms, so a good connection. Now, is the coil intact? I'm going to go from this screw to this screw and that's gonna show me about a 32 ohm um, connection. So it's not zero, so the coil is not shorted. And in fact, uh, it's not open, so the coil is not burned out. That's all good news for me. Um, so do not try this next step at home. I'm going to try it here. I have determined that these connections here and here are the ones that would energize the coil. So um, clearly these contacts are cleverly designed for a very typical installation. And all I have on this end is a 120 volt uh, plug, like you might suspect. So I'm going to plug that in over here and my plug strip has a switch. My hope obviously is that we hear the coil go clunk. How about that? That's pretty cool. So the coil is intact. Uh, the contacts are not in bad shape, but need a little polishing. So. I think my $20 for three of these and a whole bunch of other things was probably worth it. If you like this kind of little teardown video, let me know in the comments. And if you really like this video, subscribe and hit the button that says send me notifications when other videos like this appear. Thanks. Talk to you next time.